Okay, in this video we're going to look at the ventricles of the brain. These ventricles are cavernous or chambered areas in the brain lined with ependymal cells and they contain cerebral spinal fluid. Uh, this gray model you're looking at right here is kind of a three-dimensional view of those ventricles. So imagine, if you will, we've taken a human brain, we've injected it with a plastic liquid polymer and we've allowed it to solidify and then we peel the brain tissue away. What's left is this representative model of the ventricles that were once occupied by cerebral spinal fluid. If we take this out, you can see that it forms two lateral ventricles. Here's a third ventricle and a fourth ventricle down here. I don't know if you can see that in this view, but fourth ventricle, third ventricle, and the two lateral ventricles. Now, the pink areas you see painted on here represent those choroid plexuses, the specialized capillaries in the ventricles that form cerebral spinal fluid. Give you another idea of how these reside in the brain. We showed you this thalamus on the, and the brain stem in an earlier model. If we take half of this off, we can pretty much fit the thalamus in there. So it has the ventricle kind of formed around it. Another way to show this ventricle, if you look at this, this lateral ventricle, you see a C shape and it extends posteriorly. Another, again, a big C shape that extends posteriorly. If we open up this brain model, there's the thalamus again, and you'll notice that it has a cavity around it in a big C shape that extends posteriorly, and that is exactly where the lateral ventricles run on both the right and left cerebral hemispheres. If we look at the third ventricle here, you'll notice these extensions from the laterals to the third. This area represents the third, and these are the inner ventricular foramina. They are allowing cerebral spinal fluid to flow from the lateral ventricles to the third ventricle, and then the cerebral aqueduct will take it from the third to the fourth. You'll notice a little hole right here. In the earlier video, we spoke of the interthalamic adhesion. Again, if you injected this brain wherever tissue existed, plastic won't. So if we injected this brain with this plastic polymer and we pull the two halves of the thalamus apart, that adhesion that allowed them to communicate leaves this representative hole.